Todd, you have to go to the hayride with him? And his older brother. Oh, now you're kidding. Mom, where are you? Flynn, where are you? Back here. Over here. So come to think of it, Joanna Posner was glowing a little. What? Nothing, Mama. She's just kidding. Hi, everybody. I'm finally here with the long-awaited Rory Gilmore sweater guide. This took me a while because I was mainly trying to figure out how to do the sizing so that anybody of any size can make this sweater. If you're someone who's never knitted before or if you're a beginner in knitting, then that's perfectly okay because I show how to do everything that you need to know in this guide. You can make this sweater in any color, in any size, and any thickness, and this is the perfect project to develop your knitting skills with. with. All that said, let's go ahead and get started. This is the sweater that you'll be making with this guide. It seems very complex, but if you take your time, it's actually a really simple sweater to make. This is the updated version I made with the correct pattern that's closest to the one Rory wears in Gilmore Girls. It's incredibly pretty and warm, which makes it perfect for autumn and winter. This here is the first one I ever made and the pattern is incorrect, but the reason I'm showing it to you is that you can see how the pattern also works if you wanted to make a chunkier version of the sweater. I personally love the chunkiness of this one for more of a winter sweater, and I will say this will keep you warm. This one was made with a weight 5 yarn, but the weight 5 yarn was a lot chunkier than the weight 5 yarn I used in the updated version. I do recommend you use either 100% wool or a wool acrylic blend for this sweater so it can match the feel of the sweater from the show. The thing that makes the pattern incorrect is the way that I did the outside and the insides of the diamond. If you see here in comparison, the photo on the left is the first sweater I made, the sweater on the right is the updated version, and the sweater in the middle is Rory's sweater from the show. The left version is still really cute, but in this guide I'll be showing you how to do the right version. To make Rory's sweater, you'll need the following. You'll first need a weight 5 yarn. I personally used Paintbox yarn Simply Chunky, which is 100% acrylic, but I just used this since it was all I had at the time. I recommend you use either a chunky 100% wool or a chunky wool acrylic blend for this sweater. The next thing you'll need are needles. I personally recommend using circular needles as they're easier to use in my opinion and they will be needed for the collar section. These are 20 inch cable needles and I also used a 9.5 inch cable needle for the collar of the sweater. Both needles are 6mm. You'll also need some scissors, measuring tape, cable twisters, and if you don't have these in particular, you can use either another needle, a bobby pin, or something you can put your stitches on. Little stoppers are handy, but not needed. They're just helpful for when you need to take a break from the project and help keep the stitches from falling off the needles. You'll lastly need stitch markers. I used the latch ones and the circular ones throughout the project, but you can literally use tied yarn or anything that you can use to hold your place in specific sections of the project. If you're a beginner or have never knitted before, this section of the guide is for you. To start knitting anything, you have to cast on. I use the long tail cast on method for the sweater in this guide. The long tail cast on tells you how long the cast on will be with the long tail if that makes sense. So first you take the end of the yarn you want to use. Say you want to cast on 40 stitches for an example. What you'll do is wrap the yarn around your needle 10 times. and then pick up the yarn where the last wrap ended. That's how long it needs to be for 10 stitches. To get it to 40, just bend the yarn until it hits the other part of the yarn. So that's 20. That's 30. And that's 40. At the end, you'll have how long the tail needs to be for 40 stitches. After you have that figured out, you have to make a slip knot. To do so, just grab the yarn with both hands and push it together, which will form a loop. Then put your fingers inside the loop and pull the yarn that's connected to the ball of yarn through. Turn the slip knot so that the tail end of the yarn is to your left and the ball is to your right. Then insert one needle into the loop and tighten the bottom by pulling both ends of the loop and you have your slip knot. To cast on your stitches, take the tail end of your yarn and put it inside your hand. Then you're going to put your thumb under that yarn and loop the yarn over your thumb like this. 
Then take your needle and push it into that loop on your thumb so the needle and your thumb are cuddled together. Then with your other hand, take the yarn that's connected to the ball of yarn and wrap it behind the same needle. Then push the loop on your thumb over the needle and pull the tail end of the yarn to create the stitch. And there you have your long tail cast on. Once you have the cast on amount you need, it's time to knit. To knit, all you have to do is push your right needle into the loop that's on your left needle from the bottom, making sure the needle is behind the needle with all the loops. Then take the yarn that's connected to your ball of yarn and loop it counterclockwise around the needle you just inserted. Then take that needle and push it under the loop you first inserted it into and drag it upward and off the needle. That's the knit stitch. To purl, first take your needle and insert it into the loop downwards and in the front. Then take the yarn that's attached to the ball and loop it counterclockwise around the needle you just inserted. Then take that needle and push it up into the loop we inserted it into, making sure the yarn we looped around doesn't fall off, and drag it off the needle. To make the stockinette stitch, all you have to do is knit one row and purl the other. So in every stitch on this row, you're going to create one knit stitch until the end of the row. At the end of the row, turn your work. For this row, which is the wrong side of the project, you'll purl every single stitch. If you repeat this, doing only knit stitches on the right side of the project and only purl stitches on the wrong side of the project, you'll end up with stockinette stitches that look like this. Reverse stockinette stitch is literally the same exact thing as the stockinette stitch, but in reverse. So on the right side of the project, you'll purl every single stitch. Then on the wrong side of the project, you'll knit every single stitch. This gives you a pattern like this, which is reverse stockinette stitch. So basically, the difference between the stockinette stitch and the reverse stockinette stitch is whether or not you knit on the right side of your project or purl on the right side of your project. If you knit on the right side and purl on the wrong side, it's regular stockinette. If you purl on the right side and knit on the wrong side, it's reverse stockinette. To do a one by one rib, all you have to do is do one knit and then one purl and then one knit and then one purl until the end of the row. So here I did one knit stitch Then I move the yarn to the front to do a purl stitch. You have to move it to the front to be able to loop it for the purl stitch.
After the purl stitch, I move the yarn back so that I can do a knit stitch. The yarn has to be in the back for a knit stitch and in the front for a purl stitch. And once you get to the end of the row, you just turn your work and repeat it for as much as you want. If you end on a purl stitch, you start the next row with a knit. If you end on a knit stitch, you start the next row with a purl stitch. To do seed stitch, you first have to create one row of knit one purl one. I already did that during the one by run rib tutorial section earlier. Then after you turn your work, you have to do the opposite of what the stitches are telling you to do. A quick tip I have to know what stitch you need to do next is to look at the stitches below the needle. If there is a V shape like this, that tells you that you need to do a knit stitch. If there is a little bump like this, that tells you that you need to do a purl stitch. With that little tip in mind, since you have to do the opposite to achieve the seed stitch, first look at the stitch. If it's showing you that you need to create a knit stitch, then create a purl stitch, since it's the opposite. Then, if it's telling you to do a purl stitch, do a knit stitch instead. Doing this every row will give you a pattern that looks like this, which is the seed stitch. Cable twists are when you twist your stitches either in the front or behind the next set of stitches. There are many different amounts of cables you can do, but for this guide, you'll only be using the basic 4 cable twist and the 8 cable twist. A 4 cable twist is when you have a total of 4 stitches and you place the first 2 stitches onto a separate needle or a cable twister. Then place the twister either to the front or the back. Then you knit the next two stitches. After you take the twister that has the first two stitches on it and knit those two stitches, this is what creates the twist. If you place the twister to the back, a cable that leans to the right will form. If you place the twister to the front, a cable that leans to the left will form. For an 8 cable, it's exactly the same. The only difference is that you have 8 stitches to work with. So add the first 4 stitches onto the twister, and then knit the next 4 stitches. Then after, knit the 4 stitches that are on the twister. Then the 8 cable twist is done. Since they are stockinette stitches, the same rules apply. So for the wrong side of the row on these cable twists, you purl the backs only. No twists are needed. If you see something like this that says CF4 or CB4, that's basically saying you're making a 4 cable twist. The F is telling you to put the twister to the front and the B is telling you to put the twister in the back. To cast off, knit the first 2 stitches. Then insert your needle into the bottom loop on the opposite needle and pull that over the top loop and off the needle. Doing this takes the stitches off your needle to end the project. Do this for every stitch until you have one more loop on your needle. Then at the end, grab the yarn attached to the ball of yarn and loop it over your needle. Pull the bottom loop over the top loop and then you can cut the yarn and pull it to secure. And that's it. If for whatever reason you have to do a purl stitch before casting off, first do your purl stitch. Then take your yarn and place it behind the needle like so. Then finish your cast off as normal.
I first want to mention a huge thank you to Kate's video here where she explained her way of doing gauge and made it so simple to understand and she makes amazing videos so I definitely recommend that you check her out. To figure out how many stitches you need to do for your specific size, you first have to create a little swatch with the stitches that you'll be using on the sweater. I created a swatch using the first 30 stitches of the pattern which includes two cables. I made a total of 14 rows which was random and didn't matter since we're only figuring out the width. The length of the sweater can be however long you want it to be, but if you want a specific measurement for your torso, you can use the exact same method I'm about to show. After creating the swatch, measure your shoulder width. For an example, mine is 17 inches. You're now going to measure the width of the swatch you created. My swatch when stretched is 10 inches. You're going to do some math using this formula here. Add in the amount of stitches you used for your swatch, which was 30 stitches, and then multiply that by your shoulder width, which was 17 stitches for me. For that total, using my inches measurements, I got 170. Then you're going to divide the sum you got by the width of your swatch which for me was 10 inches. That sum is the amount of stitches you need for a fitted sweater. For me, that sum was 51. So if I wanted a fitted sweater, I would cast on 51 stitches. I also recommend to round up to an even number for this specific pattern, so I would actually cast on 52 stitches. Now, for this specific pattern and the types of stitches I'll be using, I recommend that the minimum amount of stitches you use is 66. That way, the design of the pattern can show and be more accurate to Rory's. So if you're an extra small in sweaters, I would recommend starting with a cast on of 66 for a cute oversized sweater. Now for sizes small and up, to make your sweater oversized, you'll have to measure out where you want the sweater to land on your arms. Sweaters have a seam where the front of the sweater stops and the arms begin. You're basically choosing where that seam is going to stop. For me, I chose a measurement of 28 inches for how big I want the shoulders to be. Then I used that number to do a new calculation in place of my shoulder width and after multiplying that by the amount of stitches used for the swatch, which was 30 for me, and then divided that by the number of the width of the swatch, which was 10 for me, I got a total of 84 stitches that I should cast on with. I'm a size small but I ended up adding 2 more stitches to the amount just cause I wanted to. Now that you know how many stitches you need to use to cast on with, you can figure out how many stitches you'll need for each section of the diagram. The numbers in black indicate the amount of stitches that will never change no matter the size you're making. The sections without numbers indicate the parts you'll have to figure out for yourself. To figure out how many stitches you need for the middle diamond section and the seed stitch sections, first find the middle stitch from your cast on amount by dividing the cast on number by 2. For my cast on amount of 86, I divided that by 2, which is 43. So I basically have 43 stitches on each side of the diagram when split down the middle. Now divide that number by 23. The number 23 comes from the stitches I mentioned earlier that stays the same no matter what size sweater you'll be making. The sum of this is the amount of stitches you have left over for the middle diamond section and the seed stitch section. For my sweater, I subtracted that 23 from 43, which gave me 20 stitches. Then all you have to do is divide that number by 2, and that'll give you the amount of stitches you'll need for those leftover sections. So in my case, I need 10 stitches for the seed stitch section and 10 stitches for half of the diamond section. Then go ahead and write those numbers down and repeat them on the other half of the sweater. So for my sweater, since I had 10 stitches for one half of my middle section, that means that I have a total of 20 stitches for the whole middle section when you include the other half of the middle section. I truly hope this makes sense. To double check, add all the stitch numbers of each section in the diagram and you'll get the number of stitches that you decided to cast on. Now that you know how to knit, and your cast on for your size, it's officially time to start making the sweater. Here is a little diagram of the overall look of the sweater. I broke it down into sections that state which stitches will be used in what section. I have a little color chart at the bottom that also includes the doodles I used in case the colors are hard to see. But basically, this can be used for any size since no matter what, this is what the sweater will end up looking like. The two sides at the end will always be using seed stitch, then after is one stockinette stitch, then after two reverse stockinette stitches, then an 8B cable, two reverse stockinette stitches, one stockinette stitch, two reverse stockinette stitches, a 4B cable, two reverse stockinette stitches, then one stockinette stitch. 
In the middle is the diamond pattern that will include seed stitches in the middle of the diamond and reverse stockinette stitches on the outer parts of the diamond. This is a chart for the middle diamond as an example of what you'd have to do with a little chart for the symbols at the bottom. But basically this shows that for every right side of the project, you'll have to add the cable stitches. So for rows one and three, you're adding a left leaning twist in the middle of the project. Then for row five, you're adding one left leaning twist and then a right leaning twist and then every odd row, you're gradually moving it one stitch to the left and one stitch to the right and while doing so you're also adding seed stitches in the middle of the diamond to add that extra texture if it doesn't make sense to you now it's okay because I'll be showing you how to do this in the tutorial but I just wanted to show this little chart so you can see what you'll be doing exactly For the front and back panels, you're first going to long tail cast on the amount suited for your size. For me, who wears a size small, I cast it on 86. After casting on 86 stitches, you're going to work a total of 6 rows of stockinette stitch. For stockinette stitch on the odd rows or the right side of the project, you'll do an entire row with knit stitches like so. At the end of the row, turn your work and work purl stitches for the entire second row like so. At the end of the row, turn your work to be at the beginning of row 3. So far, I did a total of 2 rows. You're going to repeat this for a total of 6 rows. After the 6 rows of stockinette stitch, you're going to create 4 rows of rib stitch. To do this, all you're going to do is knit 1 stitch and then purl 1 stitch. Repeat this until the end of row 7. At the end of the row, you're going to work to start row 8 the exact same way as row 7. Repeat this for 4 rows, which will bring you to row 11. On row 11, you're going to begin the design for the bulk of the sweater. Even though this is row 11, I'm going to restart the count to make it easier to remember what row I'm on. So note down somewhere that the start of the design pattern is actually row 11, even though I'm now going to go by row 1 of the pattern. I'm going to be breaking down the first 4 rows and then some of the middle diamonds so that you know exactly what to do. Here is one of the finished panels of the sweater. There's three sections of the panel, the left side, the middle, and the right side. The steps for the left and the right are going to be exactly the same until you have the decrease for the neck, which we'll get to when it's time. But the only section that really changes is the middle diamond since it needs to spread outwards and then inward and then twists in the middle. For row one, you're first going to do seed stitch with the amount that you calculated earlier. For me, that is 10 stitches. Since the seed stitch is making the stitches opposite of the previous row, the first stitch I'll do is a purl stitch since the previous stitch was a knit stitch. Then for the next stitch, I did a knit stitch since the previous row was done with a purl stitch. I went back and forth with this for a total of 10 stitches. After the seed stitch, I recommend adding a stitch marker to remember where the seed stitch section starts and ends. For the next stitch, I did one stockinette stitch, which for the right side of the project is just one knit stitch. For the next two stitches, I did reverse stockinette, which for the right side of the project is just one purl for each of those stitches. The next 8 stitches are going to be a cable stitch. To do an 8 cable that leans to the right, grab your cable twister or anything you can set the stitches on temporarily and add 4 stitches onto it. Place it to the back of the project, then knit the next 4 stitches. After those stitches are done, take your cable twister and knit the stitches on that needle. This makes the twist you need for that 8 cable.
For the next two stitches, add your reverse stockinette stitch, which is just a purl into each stitch. Then the next stitch is a regular stockinette, so add one knit stitch. Then the next two stitches are two purls for two reverse stockinette stitches. The next four stitches is going to be a four cable stitch, so take your cable twister and add two stitches onto it. Then twist it to the back. Knit the next two stitches. Then knit the two stitches on the cable twister. For the next two stitches, add your reverse stockinette stitch purls. Then for the next stitch, add a regular stockinette. Add a stitch marker to your needle and then get ready for the middle diamond section. Before working on the diamond, you first want to count up from the stitches you haven't worked on yet to the amount of stitches that you've done for the right side of the project. So if I worked 33 stitches on the right side just now, I'm going to count up 33 stitches starting from the left side. This is the only time you'll have to do this. Once you reach that stitch, add a stitch marker to it to indicate where the middle section ends. Now that you know which exact stitches are going to be in the middle and it's indicated with your stitch markers where the middle section ends on both sides, take those same stitch markers and move them into the middle by one stitch. This tells you where the diamond twist will end once it spreads out later on. Once that's done, figure out the four middle stitches of the middle section. You can just use your fingers to count up until you reach the middle where you have four stitches in between like this. These four stitches are going to be used to create the first twist in the middle. Add a stitch marker to each end of the stitches to know where the twist will start and stop. Once those are where they need to be, get ready to start knitting again. For the stitches before the twist section, you're going to work reverse stockinette stitch by making purl stitches since you're on the right side of the project. The stitch before this yellow stitch marker counts as the middle section, but again, these stitch markers just indicate where the diamond twists will end. So this first stitch has to be a reverse stockinette stitch too. Once you reach the first stitch marker, take them off and then get ready to start the twists section. Take your cable twister and add two stitches onto it before placing it to the front of the project. This makes it lean to the left. Knit the first two stitches that aren't on the twister, then knit the two that are on the twister. Then add your stitch markers back to the first and last stitches of the twist you just did. Now that the cable is done, you can work reverse stockinette stitch until you reach the stitch marker that indicates where the middle twists will end. The stitch after that stitch marker still counts as the middle section, so do a reverse stockinette stitch on that stitch, which is the last stitch of the middle section. For the left side of the sweater, you're going to do everything you did for the right side but in reverse. So for the first stitch, add one stockinette stitch, which is just a knit stitch for the right side of the project. Then a reverse stockinette purl for the next two stitches. You're then going to create a four cable, which is just placing two stitches onto the cable twister, placing it to the back, knitting the next two stitches, then knitting the two stitches that's on the twister. Then do reverse stockinette for the next two stitches. Do one stockinette stitch. A reverse stockinette for the next two stitches. Then do an eight cable by placing four stitches onto the cable twister. 
placing the twister to the back, knitting the next 4 stitches. Then knitting the 4 stitches on the cable twister. Then reverse stockinette for 2 stitches. One stockinette stitch and then your seed stitch section until the row is done. Remember for the seed section you have to do the opposite of what the stitch below is. So if this is a knit stitch then the seed stitch section starts with a purl stitch. After that you can honestly just do the opposite of the stitch you did without looking since you started with the right stitch. It's going to be hard to see the first row you just did, which is why it's good to use the stitch markers at least until you get the hang of the pattern. At the end of the row, turn your work and get ready for row 2. For the wrong side of the project, it's pretty simple, but you have to pay attention to what you're doing or else the front could get messed up. The first section you're working on is the seed stitch section. You're going to repeat this until the end of the seed stitch section as indicated by your stitch marker. The next stitch is the back of your stockinette stitch. For the back of the stockinette stitches, you always purl on the wrong side of the project. The next two stitches are the back of the reverse stockinette stitches, and for those, you're always going to knit them on the wrong side of the project. Then for the sections with the back of the twist, you're going to treat them as if they're stockinette stitches, since they are stockinette stitches, so for the cable twist on the wrong side, you're going to purl them. The next two stitches are the back of the reverse stockinette, so knit those. Then purl the next stitch since it's a stockinette stitch. The next two stitches are the back of the reverse stockinette again, so knit those, then purl the next four stitches, which is the back of the four cable. Then knit the next two stitches for the back of the reverse stockinette stitches. Then purl the back of the stockinette stitch for the next stitch. This section will never change. You'll always be doing that exact pattern for the back of the side sections. For the middle section, you have to make sure you take extra care in watching the stitches. For the back of the middle section, you're going to knit the reverse stockinette stitches until you reach the middle stitch markers that show you where the middle twist is that you did earlier. Then you're going to purl the next 4 stitches since that's the back of the middle twist. Make sure to place your stitch markers back to where they were. Then finish the reverse stockinette knits until the middle section ending stitch marker. Then repeat the steps for the beginning half for the last section of the row. So first, purl for the back of the stockinette stitch. Then for the next two stitches, knit for the back of the reverse stockinette stitches. Then purl the next four stitches for the back of the four cable. Then knit the next two stitches for the back of the reverse stockinette stitch. For the next stitch, purl for the back of the stockinette stitch. Then knit the next two stitches for the stockinette stitches. For the back of the 8 cable, purl the next 8 stitches.
then knit the next two stitches for the reverse stockinette. And finally, purl for the last stockinette stitch. For the remaining stitches, work the seed stitches by making sure you do the opposite of the stitch below. At the end of the row, turn your work and get ready to work row 3. For the left and right sections of the panel, you'll only have to occasionally twist the cables. Here is a little cheat sheet of which rows you'll need to twist the specific cables on so that it can look like the twists on my finished panels. For the rows that you don't twist on, you treat these stitches as normal stockinette stitches. So if you reach the four cable on a row where you don't twist, just knit those four stitches and then on the wrong side of the project, purl those stitches. For the rows where you do have the twist, just use the cable twister as shown in row one. The same goes for the eight cables. So for row three and four, it's gonna be exactly the same as row one and two. The only difference is, is that you won't be adding a twist to the side cables. You will, however, make a twist for the middle twist. So here is me working the same pattern as row one, making sure I do the correct stitches for each stitch. So just like the first row, I did my 10 seed stitch stitches, one stitch of stockinette, two stitches of reverse stockinette, and then I reached the eight cable. Since I'm not twisting the eight cable on this row, I just knit the next eight stitches normally since the cables are stockinette stitch, but just twisted. Then I continued working the pattern normally, and for the four cable section, I just knit the four stitches normally. In the middle section, I work reverse stockinette stitch normally until I get to the stitch marker that indicates the start of the middle twist. I then move the stitch markers, add two stitches to the twister, knit the next two stitches, knit the two stitches on the twister, Then add my stitch markers back before finishing the middle section with reverse stockinette stitch. Then I work the next half of the sweater the same way as the first half. Row 4 on the back is worked exactly the same as row 2 with absolutely no changes. When you reach the end of row 4, turn your work and then get ready to start row 5. Row 5 is the row where you start making the diamond actually diamond shaped. Before starting row 5, we have to get the middle section ready. To get it ready, first add a stitch marker to the stitch on the right of the last marker that was indicated where the middle twist ended. Then take the stitch marker that indicated where the twist started and move it forward one stitch. There should be two stitches in between the two markers. This will indicate the four cable that you will do that leans to the right. Then for the left side, add a stitch marker three stitches down. There should be two stitches in between those markers as well. This will indicate the four cable that you'll do that leans to the left. Each side has four stitches in total and that's where we'll be adding our new twists for this row. Now that those are indicated, work your row normally until you reach the stitch marker that indicates the start of the middle section, making sure not to forget about the side twist diagram to know which rows you have to do those twists on. Once you reach the stitch marker, work reverse stockinette stitch until the first stitch marker of the first twist. Once you're there, remove the first marker and the last marker for that section. Then create a right leaning four cable by placing two of the stitches onto the cable twister, then placing it in the back. Then knit the next two stitches and then the two stitches on the twister. Once the twist is created, add your stitch markers back to the stitches that they were on. For the second section, right after the first one, do the exact same thing. 
but for this one, after adding the two stitches onto the twister, place it in the front of the project so that it can lean left. Then go ahead and finish those stitches and place the stitch markers back to where they were. After the two twists are complete, go ahead and work reverse stockinette stitch normally and then the left section normally. For row 6, it's going to be exactly the same as row 2 and 4. For row 7, in every right side row from now on, you're going to work the sides as usual, making sure to keep in mind the rows where you'll need to twist the 4 and 8 cables. So I'll be skipping talking about those sections until the neck area part of the tutorial. For the diamonds in the middle, the diamond has to gradually spread out until the stitch before the stitch that is next to the stockinette stitch that separates the middle section. Basically, it spreads out until the last stitch where my yellow stitch markers are. To make the sides gradually spread out, what you're going to do on each knit row is take the first stitch marker and move it up one stitch. Then take the second stitch marker and move it up one stitch. For the third stitch marker, move it down one stitch. And for the last stitch marker, move it down one stitch. You're then going to work reverse stockinette stitch until you reach the first stitch marker. Then do a 4 right leaning cable twist by putting the twister in the back then knitting accordingly. Make sure to put the stitch markers back as you work so you don't forget where the twist starts and stops. This time, there's stitches left over before the next twist section. With those stitches, you're going to create a third seed stitch section that gradually gets larger and then smaller. So first, purl the first stitch and then knit the second stitch. Then do the left leaning 4 cable twist with the stitch marker stitches and place the stitch markers back to where they were. Then work the reverse stockinette section of the middle and then the left section of the panel. For row 8, which is the wrong side of the panel, you're going to work the side sections normally. For the middle section, the only thing you need to keep in mind is the fact that the diamond is changing its placement, so you want to keep the stitch markers in your sight to know which stitches you'll have to knit for the reverse stockinette, purl for the twists, and which ones you'll have to add your seed stitches to. While keeping this in mind, the back sides of the panels should be incredibly easy. Just take your time. For the next right side rows until row 15, you're basically going to move up the stitch markers one time for each knit row until the stitch marker is at the last stitch before the stitch next to the stockinette stitch wall. Another thing I want to mention is the seed stitching might be weird looking in the beginning and that's because when you're changing the, where the twist direction is, like say if I move this up one and then after you do the twist here, it's going to have two knit stitches next to each other and so what you want to do is basically rely on what the third stitch after is so if these are two knit stitches here and this one is a purl stitch i would recommend starting with a knit even though this is knit and i've been saying to do the opposite for a seed stitch if you do the opposite for the first one what's going to happen is that all of these are going to line up as not being opposite but if you do this one as a knit stitch again, then this one would be opposite this one and this one and so on will be opposite. And it'll look kind of weird. Like if you can see there's more knit stitches right here, but once it gets bigger and then there's a whole bunch of more seed stitch, it'll look perfectly fine. 
but that's like the only way that I could figure it out. Um, maybe someone else has a better tutorial for that, but that's just the way that I did it. So I hope that helps. Once you reach the middle section of row 15, you're going to switch the twists up a bit by making them gradually decrease inwards. So at first, for the right side of the diamond, you were doing right leaning cable twists. Now you have to do left leaning cable twists. So first move the first stitch marker for the right twist down one stitch and the second marker down one stitch. For the left diamond twists, move those stitch markers up one to know where you're adding the new twist over there as well. Once all the stitch markers are in their correct positions, begin working the middle section. First, purl the stitch that was left after moving the first stitch marker over since it's going to be a reverse stockinette stitch. Then add two stitches to the twister and instead of placing it to the back like you were doing previously, you're going to place it to the front, then knit accordingly. After, add your stitch markers back to where they were, do your seed stitch sections as normal, and then get ready for the left diamond twists. First, add two stitches to your twister, and instead of placing it to the front like you were doing previously, you're going to place it to the back so that the twist can lean to the right. Knit the twist accordingly, and then finish the row as normal. Really quickly, I want to show that right here, I am on row 23 and I'm reaching the point where the diamond is going more into itself. And so when you reach this point, um, you're going to have to ignore the markers, like just take them all off. And then you're going to find the four center stitches. So for me, those are these four right here. These are the ones that are going to be twisted so that it begins the middle twists and you're able to do three middle twists before moving on to the next diamond. Once, so basically once they're starting to get really close to each other, you're gonna add the middle twist. Here is what the panel looks like with the pattern done all the way from the twist on the bottom to the twist at the top. So basically from here, you're just gonna repeat all of this that you did from row one to 25 which is the amount of rows for mine. I'm not sure if it's going to be the same for you. Depending on your size and how big your diamond ends up. But for me, I finished this twist on row 25. So the sweater pattern for the front back panel and the arms is essentially just this. You have your seed stitch sections, your one stockinette strip, two reverse stockinettes, and then you have your eight cable two reverse stockinette, one regular stockinette, two reverse stockinette, your four cable, two reverse, one regular, and then in the center it just gradually changes from a whole bunch of reverse stockinette stitches to barely any, and then going back to a whole bunch while the twists in the middle goes outward and then inward and then twists in the middle with your seed stitches inside. So that's essentially all you're doing for this sweater. For the arms, it's a little bit different and I am gonna talk about that when we get there, but for the front and back panel, you're just basically repeating this whole block over and over until the length is where you desire it to be. So this is what we have so far and then this is the other panel that I'm working on. I did two complete diamonds and then one diamond with all the outward and then it goes slightly inward before I cut off for the neck area and I'm going to show you how to do the neck area when we get there. So, so far we are right here and all that's left to do is the three twists. We already did one here so there's two more twists to do and then another diamond and stuff. The length that I did for the back panel is 20 inches when stretched and I stopped two and a half inches 
uh, from the length that I desired so that when I cut off and do the neckline, it's exactly at the length that I wanted. So just for reference, you're gonna do two more twists. So you're gonna use your twister and place it forward to make it twist to the left. You're gonna do that two more times since this counts as one. So a total of three twists. And then you're gonna go ahead and start spreading the diamond outward. And then once it gets to where you placed your little stitch markers, you're gonna go ahead and put it inward. And you're gonna do that for the next diamond. And then for the diamond after, you're gonna do half of that. So you're gonna finish the outward parts and then probably two rows of twisting inward and then that's when that's when we're going to start the neckline and then for these parts it's literally the exact same from start to finish even with the neckline so continue to make sure that you're looking at your diagram to see when you have to do the little twists for the eight cable and the four cable and making sure that you're doing the seed stitch sections and you'll be okay. Here is a little cheat sheet of which rows you'll have to do for the outward twists when you have to switch to the inward twists and when you have to do the middle twists like the ones we did in the beginning. I do wanna mention that the specific row the twists change on could potentially change depending on how big the sweater you're making is and that's perfectly fine. Just make the diamonds to a size that you like. You can make them wide to where they do get to the stitch before the stitch next to the stockinette wall or you can make them stop at a specific place you personally like that would give the size of the diamond some stitches like this as an example. It's up to your preferred preference, just remember to write down which rows you switch the outward, middle, and inward changes so that you can make an exact copy for the opposite panel. At some point when you're working, you're going to get to the end of your yarn, and just in case you don't know how to change your yarn, all you have to do is, whether you're at the end of your row or in between, depending on what the stitches that you're working on. So right here is my seed stitch and it says that I have to do a knit stitch right here since this is a purl on the previous row. So all I'm gonna do is enter my needle as if I'm about to knit with the old yarn, but instead of using the old yarn, I'm gonna take the new yarn and place it on the needle and just knit normally. And then I'm just gonna continue working the pattern as normal with the new yarn. And this is the same way whether you're starting at the end of the row or in the middle of the row. So this is what the panel should be looking like when you're about to start the neck area. So I have a total of two full diamonds and then one diamond that has all of its outwards. And then I did two sets of inward twists before deciding this is where I'm gonna stop. So right now take out the middle diamond stitch markers because you're gonna use these to mark where you want the neckline to start and stop, and then it separates the shoulders as well. The way I usually make necklines is literally just holding the panel up to where it would sit on my body, choose a place where I think my head would fit comfortably through the sweater, and add a stitch marker on each side. I just used the stitch markers I used for the middle diamond for this. Then after putting the panel down, I try to make each shoulder section, which is the sides outside of the stitch markers, an even amount of stitches as close as I can. So for my sweater in particular, I did 33 stitches on one side, 34 stitches on the other side, and in the middle, 19 stitches. Just play around with it until you have an amount you're happy with. To do the neck shaping, first knit down until the first neck stitch marker, making sure that you're still following the design properly. For my sweater, that was 33 stitches. Once you reach the stitch marker, you're going to cast off the amount you designated for the middle neck section. For me, that was 19 stitches. For cast offs, you just knit the first two stitches and then take the first loop and pull it over the second loop, which equals one cast off. It's not necessary, but I also like to do the stitch that's according to the pattern before casting off. So here I'm purling because I would have purled otherwise, and then I cast off after. After casting off the neck section, you'll have one stitch remaining on your needle. This stitch counts for the next section. Knit the rest of the stitches as normal, still making sure you're following the design. At the end of the row, you're going to turn your work. 
For the next eight rows, you'll be adding decreases into every side of the sweater that is near the neck area. So first, work the wrong side according to the design as normal until the last two stitches. Once you reach the last two stitches of the shoulder, you're going to purl them together, keeping in mind the design. Since the last stitch is a purl stitch, I decreased with a purl stitch. Then turn your work. You're going to purl the first two stitches together, keeping in mind the design. So since the second stitch is a purl stitch, I'm going to purl them together since decreasing leaves one stitch remaining and I want it to still follow the pattern. After, work the rest of the row normally. At the end of the row, you're going to turn your work and repeat these steps until you finish your 8th decrease. So again, work down normally until you get to the last 2 stitches. At the last 2 stitches, look at the last stitch to see what you'll have to do for the decrease. Since it's a purl, add a purl decrease into both of the 2 stitches. Then turn your work and continue on. On the row after the 8th decrease, which for me is row 8, you're going to cast off that shoulder. After the last stitch is casted off, you'll have one stitch remaining. Create a loop with your finger and then add it to the needle. Then cast off once more. Cut a tail, pull your needle, and then the first shoulder is complete. It should look something like this. To complete the second shoulder, you have to attach your yarn to the same row you started the decreases on, on the other shoulder. For me, this was on the wrong side of the project. Then take a look at the second stitch. For me, that stitch is a knit stitch, so I first added my needles into both stitches for a decrease, then knitted them together. After the decrease, work the row normally. Then repeat the same steps for the decreasing as you did for the first shoulder for a total of 8 rows. So after that row, you'll have 7 more rows to do and then you will cast off. Then your first panel is complete. Now you have to repeat everything for a second panel. Once both of your panels are done, they need to be attached by the shoulders. To do this, first align the right sides of the shoulders together on opposite sides so that they're touching. Then cut off a tail of yarn and insert it into your tapestry needle. With the tapestry needle, you're first going to look for a v-stitch in the panel closest to you. It should look something like this. Once you finish it, insert your tapestry needle and yarn through both of the loops from the back and pull it up, making sure to leave a tail. You're then going to look for a v-stitch in the opposite panel in the same spot and insert your tapestry needle into it too. You're then going to go back to the other panel and repeat this step, pulling your tapestry needle through each v-stitch like so, which connects both panels together. You're going to do this for the entire side, making sure the patterns of the panel align with each other. Even with this 8 cable part, you're just going to go into every v-stitch one at a time and it'll align how it should. Once you reach the end, finish working into the last v-stitch you see, then turn the sweater to the opposite side. You can save this until the end just in case you mess up, but I like to go ahead and weave in my ends so that there won't be a whole bunch when the sweater is finished. To weave in your ends, just work into the opposite side of the seam and then insert your tapestry needle into the loops like so. Once you're satisfied, pull your yarn through and then do the same to the opposite side of the seam.
After, I like to go into a few more stitches just to make sure it's extra secure. When you're completely satisfied with weaving in your ends, take your scissors and cut off a tail. Then do this with all the other tails on the seam we just did. Once that shoulder is complete, do the exact same thing on the other side. Once both shoulders are complete, it's time to work on the collar of the sweater. For this, I use a 9.5 inch cable for my needles since we'll be working in the round. Take your needle and insert it into any part of the collar. I like to go from the back panel, but that's just a preference. Then take your yarn and loop it over the needle. After, pull the needle through the stitch which attaches the yarn and creates the first stitch. Then you're going to insert your needle into the next stitch and then wrap the yarn around the needle as if you're knitting and then pull the needle through. Sometimes I skip a stitch but this is up to preference. This will make the collar a bit tighter the more stitches you skip though. Continue doing this all around until you reach the first stitch you did. Once you reach the first stitch of the row, add a stitch marker to your right needle so that you know where the start of the next row is. Now what you're going to do is create 4 rows of rib stitch. But before you start, you have to make sure that the stitches are an even amount so that the rib stitch won't look weird. Count the stitches on your needle. If you reach an even number, you're fine. If you reach an odd number, all you have to do is add another stitch to the stitch closest to you like this. Now you're ready to begin. So first, knit the first stitch then purl the next stitch. Now repeat this all around until you get to the end of the row. The last stitch should end with a purl stitch. For the second row and the two rows after that, you're going to do the exact same thing, only doing knit and purl back to back. Once you finish 4 rows of rib stitch, you're going to make 7 rows of stockinette stitch. For this, all you have to do is knit every stitch for 8 rows. Since you're working in the round, you don't have to turn your work and work a purl side. So all you have to do is knit every single stitch, which is incredibly easy. Once the 7 rows of stockinette stitch is done, cast off the last row. At the end of the cast off, create a loop on your needle, cast the loop behind it off, and then cut a tail with your scissors. Then the collar is complete. Take your tapestry needle and weave in your collar ends. What I do for the parts where there's no seam is to work into the loops inside in a diagonal way. So after working my tapestry needle into the loops diagonally, I pull through and then check to make sure that none of them show in the front. I also like to go in another direction, but still making it diagonally. Do this for all the tails on the collar. Then go ahead and try on the sweater to see how it fits. The body of the sweater should look something like this, and then you'll be ready to start the arms. For the arm measurements, you're going to use the same formula as the front and the back measurements, but for your arm circumference instead of your shoulder width. So first, measure your arm circumference like so. You want to make sure it's at the widest part of your arm. Then take the swatch numbers from earlier and apply it into the formula. So first, multiply the amount of stitches in the swatch, which is 30, by your arm, which for me is 10 and a half inches. Then divide that sum, which was 315 by 5, which gave me 63. I then rounded up to the next even number so that the amount that I have to cast on for my sweater is 64 stitches. You're then going to do the middle and seed stitch section calculations again with the 64 stitch cast on. Here is a diagram for you to fill with your information, and here is a diagram with my info filled. Just a reminder, the only places that have a different amount of stitches depending on your size is the seed stitch sections on the outer parts of the sweater and the middle diamond section. To figure out how long you want the arms to be, you can play it by ear, but for accurate measurements, take the measurement of your arm length to your wrist. Mine is 22 inches. Then measure how much of the sweater's body comes off the shoulder. For me, it comes off the shoulder for 4 inches. Then subtract that from your arm length, and that tells you how long you want the arm to be. So I want my arm to be 18 inches. You can add some more inches to it if you want to roll the sleeves up like Rory does, but that's up to you. Also keep in mind that if you end up blocking your sweater, the arms will be longer. 
To start the arm, first cast on your arm cast on amount from the calculations we made earlier. For me, this was 64. Then create 6 rows of stockinette stitch. So the first row is knitted all the way until the end. Then turn your work. Then the second row is purled all the way until the end. Then turn your work. You're going to repeat this for a total of 6 rows. On row 7, you're going to do 4 rows of rib stitch, which is knit 1 and then purl 1, repeating this until the end of the row. At the end of the row, turn your work and repeat this for 3 more rows. On row 11, you're going to start your design, and because it's the first row of the design, I'll be referring to this row as row 1 from now on. The arms pattern is almost exactly the same as the front and back panels. The only difference is, is that there isn't an 8 cable on either side. So you'll be following the diagram pattern with your information filled in to know what you'll be doing for the arm, the same way you did for the front and back panels. The first thing you're going to do is the seed stitch section. So first start with the stitch that is opposite to the one in the row below. For me, this is a knit stitch, so I'm going to start the row with a purl stitch. Then from there, I just work knit and purl, repeating this for a total of 11 stitches, which is how much I need for my specific arm measurements. After, I add a stitch marker to remember when that section ends. Then the next stitch is a stockinette stitch, so I go ahead and knit that, adding a stitch marker after. The next two stitches are reverse stockinette, so purl each stitch. The next four stitches is the cable four twist. On the front and back panels, this was the eight cable twist, but for the arms, we aren't adding an eight cable twist, only a four cable. So take two stitches and add them to your twister and place the twister to the back of the project. Then knit the two stitches and then knit the two stitches on the twister. After the twist is another set of reverse stockinette stitches, so purl the next two stitches, then the next stitch before the middle section is a regular stockinette, so knit that stitch and then add a stitch marker. For the middle section, you're first going to count up the left side stitches with the amount that you did for the right side. So since I did 21 stitches on the right, count up 21 stitches on the left. Then add a stitch marker to the needle to separate the left side from the middle. Do the same with the right side. Then take those stitch markers and move them down into the middle by one stitch. These stitch markers will indicate where the diamond twists end. Now from there, count down to the four middle stitches and add a stitch marker to the first and fourth stitches, which indicate where the middle twist will be. Also, make sure to count the stitches in between the middle twist stitch markers and the start of the middle section to make sure they're even. This section is exactly the same as the front and back panels. Now go ahead and work reverse stock in a stitch for the middle section until you reach the first middle stitch marker. Take those stitch markers off and take two stitches and add it to your cable twister. Then place the twister to the front of the project and knit the next two stitches. After, knit the two stitches on the cable twister and then add your stitch markers back to the first and last stitch. For the rest of the middle section, work reverse stockinette stitches down until the middle section is over. Make sure you keep in mind that the yellow stitch markers I'm using only indicates where the diamond twists will end, but the stitch after it still counts as the middle section. Once the middle section is done, do the exact same thing you did on the right section to this left section but in reverse. So first, do one stockinette stitch, then do two reverse stockinette stitches. Then do a four cable twist. Then two reverse stockinette stitches. Then one regular stockinette stitch. Then your seed stitch section. At the end of the row, 
turn your work to begin row two. For the wrong side of the arm, it's incredibly simple. Just follow along with the pattern you did in the front, but with the appropriate stitches. For the seed stitch section, do the opposite stitch of the one you see below. So since this is a purl stitch, you're going to work a knit stitch. Then follow accordingly. The next stitch is a stockinette stitch. The wrong side of a stockinette stitch is worked with a purl stitch, so go ahead and purl that. Then for the two reverse stockinette stitches, you're going to knit them. For the back of the cable twist, it's always going to be purled since the cable twists are still stockinette stitches. Then knit the two reverse stockinette stitches. Then purl the regular stockinette stitch. For the middle section, knit all the reverse stockinette stitches until you reach the cable twist stitch markers. At the first stitch marker, go ahead and take them off, then purl the four stitches since they are still just regular stockinette stitches. Place the stitch markers back, then knit the rest of the reverse stockinette stitches in the middle section. Once the back of the middle section is complete, go ahead and finish the last section. So first, purl the stockinette stitch, then knit the two reverse stockinette stitches. Purl the four cable twist stitches. Then knit the two reverse stockinette stitches. Purl the next stockinette stitch, and lastly, work your seed stitch section the opposite of the stitches below them. At the end of the row, turn your work. You're going to work the rest of the arm according to the pattern you created, as well as the instructions given during the front and back panel section of this guide. Here is a cheat sheet on where you need to add the four twists on the side, as well as where the diamonds will twist inwards, outwards, and have center twists. This could be different for you, but still make sure to write down what rows you twist on so that you can know for the second panel you have to create. This is what the final product should look like. I cast it off on row 75, which was 18 inches in length. To attach the arms to the body of the sweater, you're first going to align the top of the arm to the body, then take the arm and fold it in half. Take a stitch marker and insert it into the last stitch in the middle of the arm, and then attach that to the part where the front and back panels are connected like so. You're then going to take your stitch markers and use them to keep the arm aligned to the body of the sweater. Then take a long piece of yarn and use your tapestry needle to go into the bottom of a v-stitch like this. You're then going to pull the yarn through, but make sure to leave a nice tail at the end for weaving in later. Then on the body of the sweater, you're going to look for a bar in the middle of the v-stitch like this and go through that with your tapestry needle. After pulling through, go back into the next v-stitch on the arm. and then find the next bar stitch in the body of the sweater to go through before pulling. If there isn't a bar stitch, then I just go under the little bumps from the seed stitch sections. You're going to do this back and forth until the end of the panel. At the end of the panel, turn the body around to the wrong side and weave in the tail you have left over into the seam. I worked into the loops a couple of times before working into the opposite side and then did the same with the other tail before cutting them both off. To finish attaching the arm to the sweater, fold the sweater in half and align the panels together. Doing this will also fold the arm in half. Then take your stitch markers and align the armpits of the arm panel together. Then add the stitch markers down the side of the sweater and the side of the arm to make sure it's aligned and even. 
Then take a really long piece of yarn and insert it into your tapestry needle. To seam the sides together, first insert your tapestry needle into the bottom of the panel. Pull through, making sure to leave a tail for weaving. Then for the other side, go ahead and do the same, making sure to pull through. Then from here until the end of the arm, find the bar in between the V-stitch on the first side of the panel. Push your tapestry needle through and pull the yarn through. Then look for another bar in between the V-stitch on the other panel and do the same, pulling the yarn through. Then go back to the first panel and go into the next bar stitch and do the same for the other panel. When you get to the bumpy sections, just continue to search for the bar in the middle of each stitch and go through those. If you can't find a bar, then go under the bumps and that works perfectly fine as well. At the end of the arm, weave in the tails left over into the seam, making sure to go through at least two sets of loops before cutting off. Then one side of the sweater is complete. Do the exact same thing to the second arm, and then your sweater is complete. This part is completely optional, but if you want the sleeves to be rolled up and stay rolled up like I do instead of having it hang out, then follow this next step. First, put the sweater on and roll the sleeve up to where you want it to stay. I personally rolled it up twice so that it can stay around my wrist. Then use stitch markers while the sweater is still on you and pin the sleeve roll down so that it stays when you take the sweater off. Then take your sweater off and take a long piece of yarn and insert it into your tapestry needle. Take the needle and go from the inside to the out and begin sewing back and forth around the entire edge of the sleeve roll. You don't have to sew into every single stitch, but just enough so that the roll doesn't become undone. Once you reach the place where you first began to sew, push the needle into the inside of the sleeve and then pull the yarn out gently. Then after, weave the tails in the sleeve wherever you want and the roll will be secured. Again, this is completely optional, but it makes the sweater more accurate to how Rory wore it in the show. You can block it if you want to, if you want the arms or body to be slightly longer, which I recommend, but it's entirely up to you. I hope this guide was incredibly helpful for you, and if you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments down below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!